this is a video about, this is the third part of the video of tax equity for solar with a fixed uh, flip date. Okay, oh, can't hardly get this out of my mouth. Now the earlier ones, if you saw them good, if you didn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, we're going to start really going through the tax, some of the tax provisions and why you distribute cash flow and tax benefits, and tax benefits come from distributing income, why you distribute them in a different manner. Before I get into the Excel, I think it's worth talking about something. So I had put a little stuff. I went, you know, I, I, I when I started working on this, what I did just now is I, I put that. Uh, I wondered, you know, why all these complications about things called income reallocation limit on taxable. If, if the dividends exceed the income, it generates something I think called a 734 gain. It's called a deemed sale sometimes. Why does that occur? And they have this thing called a suspended loss. If the equity capital computed in a very specific way becomes would be negative without this suspended loss, what about this DRO? What is all this stuff? And the first time I did this, uh, I thought, ah, oh, well, here's all I have to do. I got to take a model, replicate it, just put those formulas in, and just be done. Then I can make these models, and I can be done, finished. Ah, oh, horrible way to do things. You need to understand things a little bit. Why are these structures so complicated? Which is what we're going to get into. And, you know, here, here's what the way I was, when I was kind of walking around thinking about this, I thought, well, you know, here's what the tax authorities are trying to do. They, if you pretend there are two people, one, me, who's really poor, who has a low tax bracket, another one, ah, Elon Musk, he's really rich, he's probably still got a low tax bracket, but pretend he's got a high one, some billionaire, okay. If I could make a partnership, and if I get some kind of tax deduction because I'm an idiot, I wasted money on something, wouldn't it be better to get, put that around, circle that, ring fence that in a partnership and let Mr. Elon Musk take the tax benefits? And he could do it for thousands and thousands of people. And then he could be paying zero tax. He probably does something like that anyway. Okay. Uh, so, th this this is kind of the issue of these partnerships. How how can the the idea really is to transfer uh, 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 partnerships? And let me, I, then I made some silly example of a child. Okay, you're taking a tax deduction for a child. Let's create a partnership, not a marriage or maybe a marriage. I don't know. Okay, uh, I shouldn't be laughing. And then you allocate all of the, uh, you, you have two partners for this child, and you want the, to, uh, 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 I, I made an example. I said, okay, one partner has a 40% tax rate here. Another partner has a 15% tax rate. You want to get the deduction for this child. I pretend it's 5,000. You want to get that to the person with the 40%, not the 15%. Okay, and I pretended that's the billionaire and all that. Okay, and that the value of the tax deduction for the poor person is only seven fifty, for the rich person is two thousand. Can't we get it to the two thousand? Can't we make a little partnership? Maybe we'll uh, 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 the the rich person will give us one thousand five hundred to get the two thousand uh, uh, value of the tax deduction. Okay, this example, the reason I made that it's supposed to demonstrate why things are complex. If the tax authorities would let you do all of this, then, you know, everybody would be selling their tax benefits. They'd be creating uh, partnerships all the time, which are really just structured only to get the, the, the tax benefits to one party. So the tax authority, the IRS, has to make some rules 
And their rule says, look, if we don't want to limit partnerships. Partnerships can be structured however you want. They can uh, 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 allocate income to one party. They can flip things around. They can get cash flow to another party. But we have to do one thing. If you do not, if it's just purely a tax a transfer and that tax equity investor, that billionaire, if they are only in it to take tax benefits, we're going to call that a sham transaction or something fancier, and you're going to lose all your tax benefits. Maybe you pay a penalty. Maybe you'll go to jail. I don't think you'll go to jail. I Who knows? Okay, and then in renewable energy, of course, there are these gigantic tax benefits. Okay, and and you know, and and when I talk about the my little uh, 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 child example, think about the child becoming a teenager. <laughs> then Elon Musk would have to take the risks. He'd have to take some real risks in raising this child. To get the benefit. That's what the IRS wants to do. Now, what they've do, done is made a safe harbor. I can't make this. This is supposed to be like a storm, and these ships are safe in the harbor, not outside here in the storm. I couldn't find a good picture of this. And they said, look, if you have certain specific rules, if you have rules, and these rules include this 99, 1%, 5% of the cash flow, you have to hold the asset until after the tax is finished, then you're at risk. Then the partner has a real risk. And it took me so long to understand what this whole safe harbor meant and everything else. So I tried to write it down just a little bit. Now, uh-oh, we're going to go to the, the model. Hmm. Look, I've, my, ta- my, my uh, uh, generic macros was having a really bad week last week. And I put a new version up, and I wasted a lot of time on that. Okay, so this is where we left off. We had all our IRRs for this yellow one, and now we're going to start this one. And it's going to take a long time to get this one, and we're going to have to allocate income... Here in the pre flip 99.1, if you do not have a sale, then in the post flip 5.5, you, this demonstrate you have risk, you have, you have at risk. Okay. And we're going to look at this sale. Okay. And we're going to look at how to model these distributions, and we've got a preferred yield. I think that's, and and this fair market option is 7% of the investment. And your real investment, it's really 7% of 1.31, which is a lot higher than 7% of 31. Remember, this is called the contribution ratio. So we're going to model all of these things, the sale, these distributions, and of course, when I make a distribution to one partner, it changes the distribution to the other partner. And these are the, if not the exact, the approxim, they, I'll call them, these are the safe harbor provisions, these things here and these things here. So th- we're not going to worry too much about the debt here or the, even the back leverage that's going to be in our uh, uh, next video, okay? And uh, so I've got, we've made it through this page, this page, this page, and now we've we've got the, uh, 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 the tax equity, okay? And here's where we start, okay? I have now, and again, what I'm going to do, and now, I change this. You know, if you don't want this, you can just write an auto-open. This is just a, a little auto-open thing, and I had to do that because of JBIC. And I think we have most of these things okay. Column B, we have five rows at the top. And the only thing I'm doing here is, I ah, yeah, I made it a red color. So right now, I'm 
going through, and I'm sorry about this, it should be much more quick. I, I, it, that Now it, it's not so long. I was really frustrated about why it was taking so long. Like, that's a subject. So this comes from the other sheet, basically. This comes from our previous sheet. And then the first thing they do is they compute a preferred yield. This is, and this is, this is, Oh, something important. I, I, I need to, perhaps what I really should have done, and I'm sorry for being scatterbrained and random. I got a comment. It was a good comment from somebody who said, your website has a lot of stuff, but it's all like random shit. Okay. Uh, so I, we have some tax inputs that we talked about. And then for the tax in, investor, we have 6.5. Now, if this was a, and it will be a periodic model. It would actually be six and a half years. So we got to be careful. And I got to move this horrible piece of crap thing that I did with you over here. And then we have how much investment they. But there was a presentation my friend Jeff gave me from a seminar, and they put this tax investor income, and they said, okay, we get preferred dividend dividends. We get some distributions of cash flow. The preferred was much bigger. At the end, we get some proceeds, we get the uh, ITC up here, and then we get some other value of tax credits. Oh, here we get some taxable income, but look, uh, this goes negative and positive. This is the big problem. This, the fact that it's not just the tax uh, a, a, a depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. And then they have a gain on the sale when they exit this in six years. And then they get only a 13% return. <laughs> Here's the cash flow, the cumulative cash flow. But you recompute this. Ah, this I shouldn't have done this small. I'm going to get it much bigger. And, and look at it. And see kind of what the IRR is. So the real IRR. Not this ROI, I can really moan. This IRR, oh, it shouldn't have been going around like this, is 46%. That's gigantic. 46% IRR. And that's after they lose some benefits from the stranded investment. So it illustrates things. Now, what they part, they get, so they pay this additional amount. And, in the case we were uh, uh, just looking at, and we can adjust this down, I hope. Another problem who kind of are on the tax equity side, okay? Uh, and then I, I put the ROI and, oops. I was in the inputs, sorry. And then uh, this is, it, I should say FMO. Is it fair? Now that's part of our safe harbor option. Uh, and uh, uh, percent. Uh, now you cannot have, this has to be verified that it's a fair market value to be under this safe harbor so you could not have a contract it's got to be a option uh, otherwise it doesn't qualify but this is probably what's going to happen you're going to sell it for seven percent of this contribution remember you got the investment tax credit right away so so this really the this would be a, a, a seven percent of just the uh, seven percent of 0.25 divided by 1.25 is that right something like that okay and then we're going to make an option to either sell it or not sell it and what should happen if this fair market value is about right is that the irr to the tax investor should be about the same uh, whether we do it or not. And then we have some other uh, 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 inputs for the what happens to these constraints, you, which will be a subject in the next video about the 
uh, limitations, including the DRO and some minimum gain stuff, which is just something that intimidated me so much I could hardly stand it. Now, I used to have, in the very first time we said, okay, there, there's a, a third party, I'm taking that out. I hope I didn't mess everything up, anything up just now. But we have a, and I'm, I'm perhaps going to change the model as we go around. So this is the, if you do not sell, I should put allocation of, of this without sale from tax investor to sponsor. I don't know if I should really call it sale or uh, buyout. I think it is, is, isn't the term buyout a little bit better, huh? without buyout, okay? I hope you're not getting thoroughly irritated with me, uh, uh, but I think it's good to go through these terms and the inputs. And this says uh, pre-flip cash flow, 5%, 95, same thing. Tax investor has to have 5%. That's what I understand. Pre-flip on the income, 99.1, tax investor gets everything while the asset gets the five-year tax depreciation. So the tax investor gets the tax losses. Post-flip, 1%. He's, you have to stay in there for 1% if you don't have the buyout. And the revert, and then... Uh, 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 on, on the post-flip, tax investor still has to be in there for 5%, and he hates that because that's income and not a loss, and the poor old sponsor has to pay all those taxes, but maybe the sponsor has no taxes anyway. And then this, to, to make, I, I, you know, what happens in these models, by the way, that I've looked at, these things get overly complicated, cure periods, uh, blah, 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 too many. But this is the fundamentals. And then the debt funding we went through before. So that was helpful. Ah, you know what I have to do after I just said that? I have to, uh, I messed around with our sensitivity. So we need to reset that. That's good. We can set it, I think. So complicated. We have to understand that this, the base for the equity is the investment. And I, you know, I kept that the same, excuse me. And we have to understand, I guess, that this would uh, uh, happen. This is the total amount of cash flow you get after debt. I'm just making a goddamn video and I'm having a hard time, okay? Leave me alone. And then, uh, uh, I put a preferred dividend, preferred dividend of 2%. Uh, I don't want to pause again. I've already paused it like 10 times. So the preferred dividend is a fixed number that's just 2% of the investment. Okay. And here is the problem. We have to have enough cash flow. And in this period... We did not have enough cash flow to pay the dividend. And here's where the whole thing really comes together. If you would put more debt in the project, that has some advantages. It has some advantages over here in particular of reducing our same equity uh, sponsors uh, exposure to not to having their tax limited and all that introduction I have. But in this case, we, uh, we the cash flow that we have from the equity is here. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, yes, we have no cash flow. I made it very extreme because we, all our cash flow had to go to pay off the debt and we didn't have enough to pay off all the debt and we defaulted and then we have to repay our default so this 
poor old equity preferred shareholder, the, 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 the tax investor, uh, gets no equity, and then they have a default. So there are two kind of defaults you have in this uh, uh, analysis. And the biggest thing to think about and realize is this why the, this is why the tax equity investor doesn't, they like debt kind of for the, or they theoretically should like debt because it reduces their exposure to, to stranded investment. Their IRs still very high. But if you had no project debt, then you're going to have more cash flow to the equity. In this preferred, there's no chance of defaulting on the preferred. Now, when we have a default, it's kind of like any other default, which I've done in a couple of other situations. The opening balance equals the closing balance. But you don't know the default until you make a little bit of a cash waterfall. So I need. I think I'm going to call this. A, a, I'm going to insert a line and I'll just call this cash waterfall for evaluation of preferred default. Now, I, if we have a default, if we have a preferred default, you'd have to go through and ask your uh, uh, figure out, oops, I'm going to have to do it like this. If we have a default, we're going to have to figure out what happens after we have a default. You could have a default anywhere. Do you get to make it up? If you do, what kind of interest rate do you pay in between? And all those sorts of things. So uh, I think I'll leave this. Maybe that was not a... And I said, we'll just use the same 2%. So again, if I put the project debt here, now I can do that. Uh, and let's make this one smaller. Excuse me for irritating the heck out of you uh, here. And then we, with the project debt, ah, uh, crap. This, in this case, what, what, what just happened? Oh, shit. I'm losing it. I had to put higher debt here to, 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 to illustrate this point. Okay, and I hope if, you know, you see that the, the, the spinner boxes and all the gimmicks, they can help demonstrate what's kind of going on. So for now, I'm going to take out the project debt and continue. And again, what you do is you say, okay, here's the equity cash flow we have. And I'm going to change that. That probably should come from here, and then we don't have to go to another sheet. And then we'll take away our preferred dividends. And if they're negative, if the, we have a default, and we just use a maximum of the minus of this or zero, and then we use a max and a min to repay it. I've done this in so many other videos, and it's really kind of standard, and you can look at the uh, 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 functions, but don't be afraid of it. And then we can see, okay, eventually, here's how much dividends we pay after the, after the default. So we're, we're taking the preferred dividends, and we are subtracting. Uh, this is kind of... I'm going to leave the add and subtract here, but this is the net amount we have. And then we get some uh, other ones for after the default. So we get to repay the default. And you stick the default here from down here. So it's kind of like you you, uh, uh, you put the opening and closing balance in, and then you... Uh, um, you know what I'm saying. you got to get that from some kind of cash flow waterfall. And... This is exactly what happened down here. So down here we we had a default, and this is almost our equity cash flow. And and waterfall for evaluating default. Now I had this discussion with the 
tax accountant and he said, ah, it's always better to put project debt in because you get a higher R because look at the IRR if we put project debt in. We don't, we have less, but there is this little risk. There is this little risk that you can kind of demonstrate a little bit. And I'm sorry for the, the underlines. Okay, and then we start to distribute our income. Okay, and uh, I still, oh, we, we, I, I left a management fee in that really should be taken out. And we put the total EBITDA, and you might have some sort of administrative expenses that aren't in there, and I'm fixing this as I go along. And if you're complaining at me, you can complain, but the better yet, and if you uh, take my class, because I'm fixing this for the class, really, that's, I'm, I'm kind of practicing, and as a side benefit, I thought I'd just throw this video out here, really, for advertising uh, and, and other things. So we have basically our EBITDA, and then if if we're distributing this income, now, uh, just, I've got to pause it for a second. Go back to before the distribution. Okay, now I put, sometimes, you know, when you use these trace and remove arrows, I press Alt-MD for finding the dependence. So once we have the cash flow, we can have we can see how much cash flow is left after this preferred distribution. How much is cash? How much is how much cash flow is left to distribute everybody else? Now, if because of the project debt, we had not not much cash flow left, so I'm going to take this out. And more and more, when I'm making models these days. I like to put these options in the model so you can kind of see what's, what's going on. And the, the, this is the uh, tax equity cash flow you get. And pre-flip, you get uh, uh, 5%, and, and that's okay. Post-flip, you've got to be a little careful. This thing here is the FMO uh, 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 flag, F. Fair market option flag. I think that's okay. So this zero percent. If oops, if we have the FMO sale, you'll get the cash flow. If you don't, you won't. And this is as transparent as I could make it. And, and so this one has a has a, this formula says it take it directly from the inputs and multiply it by that true and false. And of course that I said of course, which is ridiculous. It's the total cash flow remaining for distribution. And I better put up here, I'm going to press shift control G. All right. And I'm just doing wacko formatting, wasting the time. Okay. And that's the same thing for the sponsor. So this is, and I think perhaps we sh should really lay this out distribution. Of cash flow, of remain uh, 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 remaining ca this after, and I'll just put that in bracket after the preferred yield. And I hope I didn't make it more complicated than it really is. It's not that complicated. The only complicated thing that maybe most of the models really wouldn't have is this little put potential for default, but I wanted to sh show you that if, if no other reason to demonstrate that the, the reluctance of the tax equity sometimes to have this project debt, and I haven't gone into the uh, uh, rest of it. Now, after we have the distribution here of cash flow, and I put before stranded taxes because this, and, and I, I shouldn't have said, this is just pure distribution of cash flow. That was kind of bad too. All right. I hope this is 
explaining things and I put this management fee in and I'm going to get some references and I don't care because here I can see the reference and let's take out the crap that really doesn't matter okay because I we have too much crap in there from uh, stuff that really shouldn't be there and then we have 99 percent of the income now this is of course what the investor wants this income is negative because of this enormous tax depreciation and of course the red one means it comes from the other sheet afterwards we have the same thing this is the fmo flag okay i i gave up i don't call it switches anymore i call it flags and uh, then the sponsor gets the opposite. This could be one or it could be one minus this. And then afterwards, again, then it is, I did use this correctly, because if we have this include the FMO and the exit, uh, uh, excuse me, then it's 95 versus this. And I think I, this is a little redundant because I've got it up here. Okay. And the ITC allocation is is based on the same thing as the as the tax equity allocation. So they don't actually get a hundred percent. The poor people only get ninety nine percent. How sad! All right, that's the basic allocation, and that comes from the safe harbor stuff and all of that. Now the next point is this painful part of modeling the sale which really shouldn't be that hard basically it should be a little uh, uh, it should be a little uh, flag for when the the sale date occurs and the sale proceeds that comes from our input seven percent and this is the total amount of the investment so you can see this is the amount you're getting and and then uh, uh, we have the flag that says the tax investor is no longer in there I'll pause it one more time the reason i paused it was because i was oh, oh i can't do that again uh, the reason I paused it was because I, I, I wanted the f colors on our flags. Okay, and then now I had some confusion, and I think I've resolved this. The question is, if the sale proceeds, I'll put to tax investor. They, the, the tax investor gets this amount of money, but the tax depreciation is all gone so if we just take the value of the asset minus the tax depreciation that's how much you get left now i'm kind of going forward to the outside capital the outside capital that's really what the 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 that's the tax basis and this outside capital was adjusted and in this case there must have been some stranded investment because it went down to zero so what that means is this, you have this gain on the sale and you don't get anything back. Now, it, you could have used the inside capital and that would have given you a big tax gain. And what I was uh, uh, all worried this memo, this memo, this video is one of my stupidest attempts. I, I tell you, I, I've been interrupted. I've made mistakes. I've done everything. So... I'm just kind of having to restart this video, and I hope I haven't done this before, but I'm going to make a little uh, uh, in in the home page conditional formatting. And in the conditional formatting, you select the area, you go over to the left, you use a formula, and I'm going to make sure that this one, and then I have to keep it on F, but allow the, the things to change. So, excuse me, on I this way and I put this equal to our little uh, 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 selection and let me format it with small do a little more strongly than I sometimes do and so here if we use the 
we could use the book value of plant. We could use the <laughs> we could use the the outside basis or the inside basis. Now I had a discussion with an accountant, and they said don't use this book basis with it. It's just very simple. It's just down here. It's just the accumulated cost of the project less the the the. This is the net value of the plant. Just the simple net value of the plant, and you better take the 99% share. So that's up here. And remember, that's our deduction. I've changed this since the last one. This is the proceeds we get. This is the deduction we get. So we can we need that to figure out the gain on the sale of the asset, and in turn the taxes we'll pay on the asset. Since this whole thing is so much about the taxes. Now, the outside basis, we're going to come to that so much more on the next video. I'm going to go crazy about it. But that, the outside basis is just the tax basis, and that seems the logical thing. But then if you read some of the other things, if you'd have to dissolve the partnership, if you'd have some kind of bankruptcy and the bank would be dissolved, this negative inside basis, which is another thing we're going to talk about, that would represent a tax liability. But dissolving the partnership is not the same as selling from one partner to the other. That's like a sale of the shares. And it turns out from the accountant, they told me this is it. But let me give you a little counter example. So if we go to the the tax equity page again. And I've tried to, I'm putting my videos here and all this, this stuff here. So uh, this is uh, A to Z, Z, I have to say, sorry. And here's the, the little explanation. And look at this. They have the all of our preferred distributions, our investor distribution, the call option proceeds, 2.7 million. Not a big, uh, a really big asset. Tax credits, blah, blah, blah. Gain on the sale. This gain on the sale is more than the tax basis. This implies that they're using the inside basis. And there are just questions. And this was actually the same accounting firm that did the little explanation for me. So... I find it a, a little confusing. That's why I left that one in here. If we would use the inside basis, and I'm sorry to be so obsessed with that, but then the gain on the sale and the taxes are a lot higher, and that affects the IRR, of course, uh, uh, to the tax investor. Now, I'm going to leave this one, okay, because that one does make the most sense, and it is... Uh, 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 and, and a tax accountant told me that that's, that's the way to do it, so I'm going to leave it. And now, once we have the cash flow, this is the, we have the cash flow from the preferred. It's almost this one. And remember, of course, this could be delayed. Uh, actually, this one was delayed. And uh, uh, um, uh, when we put our preferred distribution in, notice that this is, let's, let's make sure I've got it right, this is the K29. So that's our, our uh, net preferred distribution after you've had this default, okay? And I think this may want shift control G. And perhaps, even on this one, we might want to just insert a line and put total tax, uh, 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 ta tax, in tax investor, and this, uh, this, uh, this should be tax investor, shouldn't it be? So remember, this is the same kind of theme, which is that we, I, I'm cleaning up this model for my friend Jeff while I make the videos. Okay, and we have the total tax investor cash uh, distribution. Okay, so really that's, whoops, and then let's, let's press alternate and the equal sign. 
<laughs> alter equal. Up, oh, up. Oh, what happened here? Is alt equal some other little thing here? Come on. Okay. <laughs> Shift control R. Okay, and then let's put the spot total, and then let's put a, a shift control G. Let's let's give it a double underline, and let's put the total sponsor cash flow just below here. What is this little thing doing? And I probably use the uh, a developer and the sponsor interchangeably, and I'm I'm, I'm very I have to apologize for that. That's part of the chaos of 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 the uh, spreadsheet. And and in this case, I assume that we had a thirty-five year life for this one. Let's see. I hope this this will go away after the life is finished. Good. This one must have had a thirty-year life. Okay. And maybe this was some merchant cash flow. So we're taking this. Distribution, perhaps it wants another shift control G, the, the sponsor cash flow. And then we take this income and we have tax equity investor, that's okay. And we get the tax and equity investment gets the ITC. And the income here is the tax equity investment post flip and pre flip. And maybe I should have done a summation on that one. And I think I'm going to do that one after the video because that's just too, too much. Okay. And then we put our buyout cash flow in. And what is going on? I'm, I seem to be going uh, back and forth. Okay. And now we're ready for the whole distribution. So we've got the tax equity distribution from cash, the proceeds, uh, uh, net proceeds from the, the, sale and this better have been upstairs computed from the gain on the sale and notice that they're all ridiculously simple calculations and my rule is the f2 rule if you can't or or how about i'll make two rules either f2 so you can see everything or control and square bracket rule you can find up control and square bracket and f5 to go back Okay, that's the rule to make it totally transparent. And then we get the ITC. Now that's a tax credit. And I, again, it, it should say tax equity investor. They get the tax equity and then they have the income before the flip and after the flip. And of course, if we don't include the sale, come on, go off. Okay, something's happening. Uh, okay, <laughs> I don't know what just happened. If we don't include the sale, then you get these the negative taxable income, uh, and, and and that's uh, multiplied. Let's find that. It better be multiplied by the tax rate. The, the, there's the the income. Just a minute. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth a little bit here. Okay, and then we multiply it here by the tax rate. Of course, it should have been obvious to you. And but this one is uh, uh, this one, and we just add the investment tax credit. That's what I did. So again, I'm pressing F2 to make it fully transparent. And this is the tax equity investment. You notice it's purple. It comes from the other sheet. So then we get the total tax equity cash flow. And we can look at the IRR. And their IRR is 23% without a sale. Ooh, 32% with a sale. So that looks like it's not a very fair kind of sale. Maybe the proceeds should really be adjusted or something else. And let's look at a couple of our other projects. This one had 49 with the sale, 47 without. That looks much more reasonable. If it's really different, you should start asking questions probably. Okay, maybe it's the longer life. Well, it was a longer life. Maybe it's uh, hmm, who knows what. Okay, and 
this tax equity IRR, remember this is purely the amount of investment. You don't have to worry about all the uh, uh, interest at the project level or back leverage because these are already adjusted for that. Remember our preferred distribution was adjusted for it. And then we have this uh, uh, number. And that's it. And I'm going to stop the video because in the next video, this whole business of putting the inside basis in and then after that, putting the outside basis and then finally making an adjustment to the IR for all of these potential limits on the uh, uh, cash flow, that's going to take a little while and uh, require kind of a fresh video. All right, enough of that video, enough of this one, okay, and we're getting there sometime.